to my first vlog of 2024 on the bank because I did a, a vlog a couple of weeks ago about my gear upgrades for this year but now I'm on the bank I'm in Lincolnshire on my Lincolnshire Syndicate Water the venue that I did I think about three vlogs on last year three or four vlogs on loads of good fish in this venue loads of whackers and they're all due out as well because over the winter months there's been probably about 14 fish out and none of them have been 40s and when you know what's in this place there's probably about 45 different 40s in here there's a one in probably five chance again a 40 so there's loads due out loads of them due out and the conditions are pretty good at the moment as well because we've got about 12 degrees you can just see behind me it's burning out a little bit so I'm gonna to have to put some overlay over the top of this and you know for this time of the year that is pretty good because it's been pretty stable the last few days as well we've got another four or five days of 10 11 12 degrees as well so really good conditions for this time of the year end of January and I think I'm in the right swim as well because I'm in the shallows which is probably five six seven foot of depth average so a good area to catch a bit of sunlight and to get a bit of movement from the fish so um, you know I've got three days ahead of me and yeah it's looking good not many people down either today there's only a guy in the next door swim Spencer and there was a guy on earlier as well I don't know who it was who left just as I turned up but hardly anybody down for this time of the year which is pretty unusual and is it how I like it well yes and no obviously you like nice quiet lakes I think we all do but during the winter time you could do the bit of pressure on a lake to know where the fish are to know where they're picking bait up from who's in the right area and at the moment there's been not many people down because it's not really been fishing that well I think over the last few weeks there's been about one fish out in four weeks it did fish quite well in December but um, you know we're well on from there now and things have stabled down it's been a little bit cold and it's going nice and warm now so you know weather's been a little bit up and down and it's that stability that you need I think in January but we have got it at the minute so definitely the next few days there's a good chance of a carp or two coming out so what I'll do now is I'll show you around the swim and talk you through what I'm doing got myself some 13 footers these are the 13 foot elevates I mentioned them in my last vlog talking about some of the gear upgrades and definitely need them on this lake because a lot of the fishing is at range right out to the middle well as close to the middle as you can get I'm not sure anybody's going to be fishing out in the middle on here because some of the rules are a little bit against that kind of fishing it's maximum 0.4 line and oh sorry a minimum of 0.4 line and a maximum of three and a half ounce lead so getting out to the middle anything close to 30 wraps is a good old cast on here and I'm hoping these little babies will get me another couple of wraps on from what I was fishing last year because with the 12 footers some days I might get 30 wraps but most of the time it was 28 and even less than that when the wind was blown straight at me but uh, today in this swim I don't really need to be fishing long range this is what's called the shallow swim and you're fishing here maximum 25 wraps I'd say 24 25 wraps out towards where that second boy is what you've got is a plateau out in front here which is where all those coots are and it drops down to the right but it's a really attractive swim at all times of the year and it hasn't been fished for quite a while which is why I'm coming here today I've got all three rods on exactly the same tactics which is just with a single hook bait alongside a three bait stringer and then just scattering a light bit of bait out in the area and I'm using a throwing stick to do that so the bait's pretty much all over the place because I'm trying to get the fish moving I don't want the bait too localised I've got them spread out there the carp can smell something's in the area they might have a little mooch for it and I'm not overfeeding them either I'm just fishing with a little bit of bait it's that time of the year when spring's not too far away the carp are moving but they're not feeding too much so you're fishing for one bite at a time and conditions are looking pretty good because at the moment it's nice and warm tonight it's going to be about 8-9 degrees so pretty good for January and the next few days as well definitely looks like it could be a good time to be on the bank because it's pretty consistent weather which I always like at this time of the year and with it being sort of nines and tens regularly for the next week and a half 
I'm sure we can see some fish action on here and it's definitely dewer fish as well. A bit cold in the wind, but off the back of the wind where I am, it's certainly quite warm and over towards that far margin where I've got a rod, definitely looks like it could have a few carp or two over there. It's a known patrol area and you know this lake's not fished brilliantly these last few weeks. There's only been one carp out in about four weeks. And it isn't a brilliant winter water at this venue, but when you consider what's in here, there's definitely a chance of a carp or two if the conditions are right. And what we've got in front of here is about five, six, seven foot of water, a lot shallower than the rest of the lake, and there's definitely going to be carp in this area. They're always going to be moving around at this time of the year. I don't sort of think in a lake like this that they're all just sat there doing nothing. They are moving around. There's too many carp in here, but whether they feed or not is another matter. And on this lake, you're really restricted with what you can do because you can only use boilies on it. You can't use maggots, can't use worms. It's, it's one of them lakes that, well, you can't use zigs either, so you've got no scope to change. So you're just waiting for them to, to have a little feed on, on boilies. And bearing in mind, this lake gets quite a bit of pressure, certainly during the summer months and during the autumn months. They know what boilies are all about. They know there's a little bit of a danger in, in picking them up. So. You do get these little windows of opportunity where you've got a chance of a carp or two and then it just shuts up for a few weeks and that's what's been happening this last few weeks. There's been not a great deal caught. I think there's been one fish out in the last four weeks. So it's certainly due a carp or two and some big ones as well because there's so many good ones in this lake. And this year there's been, well not this year, but this winter since the winter ticket started, which was December the 1st, there has been about 12, 14 fish out and there's been no 40s out. And last year, there'd been about six fish out by about now, of which a couple of them were 40s, so they're due out. And I don't think, actually, there's been a 40 out of here since October time, probably middle of October, end of October. Don't think there's one out in November, and there certainly wasn't any out in December, and there's been none out in January either, so they're due out because there's loads of them in here. It's just a case of keep coming, keep putting those rods out, keep putting them in the right area, and sooner or later, one of them's going to drop down and you might get that chance. So that's why I'm here. And I've yet to catch a carp this year, so I could do with getting off the mark, getting that first fish under my belt. And I do think the conditions are prime for it today, so you never know. lens reversed here and all I can see looking back at me at the moment is my granddad because <laughs> I'm getting old and I feel really young but you can't help the old aging process can you um, apologies for that noise in the background because that's the red arrows they've been passed already three times this morning I'll just let them go over it's one of the joys of fishing in Lincoln is you see all these planes of light flying by and yesterday there was a great sight of the red arrows because the sun was setting behind me and it was all all, all the bank in front of me was was really orange and there was this great glow just in front of the swim and the red arrows flew by in formation and they turned and when they turned you've got this lovely orange glow on the underneath of the planes and it was just absolutely spectacular. If I could have got my camera and taken a picture of it, it'd have made a really good piece in this vlog but uh, unfortunately I didn't get it and it is hard to get them at the moment because they're just flying above the tree canopy. But anyway, moving on. Um, right, I want to have a little chat now about something a little bit different because you see these vlogs all the time and you get everybody talking mostly about rigs, bait and tackle in these vlogs. And I thought there's so many things to talk about in carp fishing. It'd be nice to have a little bit of a chat about something a little bit different. And one of the topics that I've seen doing the rounds on social media recently is this topic of carp angler of the year because Angling Times, towards the back end of last year, they did their Carp Angler of the Year competition. There was a lot of nominations in the running for it, and I think the overall Carp Angler of the Year was voted on by the public, and it was Lauren Stanford that was crowned Carp Angler of the Year for catching three different 70 pounders from overseas. 
And I think a lot of the chat was about Lawrence Catchy's being from overseas and not in England because historically the Carp Angler of the Year competition, certainly amongst the carp shoe magazines, it was always focused around the best catches within England. And I think eventually there used to be two different titles. There was the Carp Angler of the Year and then there was the International Carp Angler of the Year, which was about the best catches from overseas. And I think a lot of people that were commenting on the Angler Times post were saying that, yep, yeah, fantastic season, Lauren, but amongst the nominations there were some really great catches from England and certainly some historical catches which I'm going to talk about now. Now I myself have yet to hear my opinion on this particular topic. A lot of you guys watching this probably haven't even got an opinion on it, you probably don't even care about the Carp Angler of the Year competition but I know there's a lot of people that are really immersed in carp shooting like I am and they've been around carp shooting for a long time so they're quite passionate about it and they're quite vocal about it and I've yet to hear my reviews on it so I thought it would now be a nice time to, to say a little bit about about it and give you my own opinions on it. Now firstly I'd say well done to Lauren, she had a fantastic season fishing last year, catching three different 70 pounders is not easy from two different waters overseas. Um, but has it been done before? Yes it has, it's been done lots of times before and for someone like myself who worked on Carp Talk for many years I saw lots of different catches from overseas and I can think of many many times dating back many many years when people have caught three different 70 pounders during the same season. I can think of people that have caught three different 70 pounders not just in the same week but also in the same day. Here goes the red arrows again behind me so a little bit more noise. So it's definitely been done before and that's not to knock Lauren, I do think she's had a fantastic season and she's certainly worthy of the International Carp Angler of the Year but amongst the nominations for Carp Angler of the Year this year was Martin Clark and Martin Clark's been around carp a long time, long time angler, written books about it, caught many a great fish, these days he doesn't go fishing a great deal, he, he works in the week as a builder and I think it's mostly weekends he goes fishing but this year what Martin has done is he's caught two 60 pounders from England. Now the number of people that's caught two 60 pounders from England you can probably count on one hand. I myself can only think of a couple of guys that's done it and that's Mark Holmes who caught one from Nash's Lakes and deep in Syndicate. I can also remember Cy, uh, Cy Beta doing it, also he's the first to do it, Cy was, which was he caught two times from Connie and Brook, he then caught the Churchy Biggin as well at 60 so you know it's been done before but Martin uh, has caught two 60 pounds in the same season and more than that he's caught them from two different waters as a weekend angler just having the odd trip away for a little bit longer than that so you know what he's done this year it's never been done before and it may never be done again so it's a pretty historical catch so in my mind I do believe that the carp angler of the year this year should be Martin Clark the overseas carp angler of the year it could be Lauren Stansford for what she's caught, but that's not knocking Lauren. Fair play to her. Take your moments. You've had an absolutely fantastic season, certainly amongst Lady Carpangers. Nobody's ever done that before. But Martin Clark, his catch should not be overshadowed, and that's why I've put this out there today. Is just to say that, you know, Martin, big ups to you, mate. You've had a fantastic season fishing. You should be Carp Angler of the Year, mate. And moving forward from this, I'm currently the editor of Carp Shoe Magazine, which is owned by the Carp Society. We don't yet run an, um, a Carp Angler of the Year competition, but I'm certainly going to be putting forward to, to the uh, Board of Directors to maybe have a, a Carp Angler of the Year competition in the future, whereby we've got Carp Anglers. Here we go again. It's not down to me to, to decide whether we do a Carp Angler of the Year competition going forwards, but it's certainly something that I'm going to put to the to the Carp Society Board of Directors and say, let's get some sort of Carp Angler of the Year competition going, whereby it's Carp Anglers voting on this topic and, and it's Carp Anglers having a say in it. And you know, fair dues, Carp Anglers might say that Lauren is worthy of the overall Carp Angler of the Year, but personally, I think a lot of people that have been involved in carp fishing will know that Martin has had an absolutely outstanding season and you know as I say it's never been done before what he's done and it may never be done again so if you're watching Mart I've, I've said everything I can to try and big up your season mate and um, you know I, know I know a lot of people out there agree with me and I'm sure there's quite a few people that don't agree with me either way but as I say stick your comments below let's get some discussion going and um, you know let's have uh, let's have carp angler of the year back within the carp fishing industry again because uh, I'd like to see it have its history protected I'd like to see it uh, be more involved in the carp shooting industry rather than just the general angling magazines but fair play to Angling Times for still going with it they are the most historical angling magazine that's out there so it is still a prestigious title 
and um, you know, fair play to Lauren for winning it. And uh, I'm probably sure she's not even going to be listening to me now, and she probably don't care either. So, fair play to you. But um, there you go. That's my opinion on things. Excuse me, just burped. <laughs> anyway, let's get the uh, the kettle on because I could do the drink now because my mouth's going a bit dry from all that waffling. But yeah, I still look like my granddad. <laughs> Thirty-two and a half pound mirror. So, needless to say, I am very happy because I'm off and running, or up and running, whatever the saying is, for the new year. I sent the missus yesterday. I might have a dry January and not catch anything, but there you go. And here's the other side. Lovely big scales across its dorsal area. I saw it across its chest, I thought it was a lot bigger than what it is, but I ain't bothered. £32, pound, first carp of 2024. Brilliant. 